So let's get started off looking at on-chain FX. And as you can see here with on-chain FX, we look at the 24-hour change versus USD. Basically, everything is getting totally just whomped. Um, Bitcoin itself is down 15%, which in Bitcoin's case, that's a pretty big move when you talk about the size of Bitcoin right now. I mean, that's a, it's a $200 billion cryptocurrency and it's down 15%. That's a pretty big, pretty massive move. Um, Ethereum down 16%, Ripple getting crushed down 25% against the dollar, Stellar Lumens down 25%. A number of basically every bit of the crypto world is down. Even NEO is pulling back a little bit from its all time high the other day. On on chain FX, out of I think 60, what did we have here? 61 cryptos on on chain FX. There are two that are in the green right now NEO Gas and First Coin. I don't really know all that much about First Coin. I don't know if I really want to know all that much about First Coin, but uh, that is the only one that is like legitimately in the green right now. So, if you have any bit of money in crypto, you're probably taking a haircut. And how should you be thinking about it? How should you be looking at it right now? Uh, the first thing I would say is that there really isn't anything fundamentally driving this dip. At least in my opinion, there's not. There are a lot of rumors out there. There are a lot of theories. There are news articles coming out right now blaming South Korea. That's old news. That literally is old news. There are people out there saying this has to do with China. China hasn't been in the crypto game since like September when they basically banned all cryptocurrency. They banned ICOs and they banned crypto trading. This doesn't have anything to do with the miners in China. The miners in China have already begun the move out process. And I think a lot of them are actually moving to Canada. So this has nothing to do with China. The South Korean news is old news. Could this have something to do with that? Maybe a little bit. Yes. But this is a it's a, it's a sell off without a specific piece of news behind it that you can point to and say that was your fault you did this and this is exactly why crypto is selling off there is no specific one reason i'm sure it's a culmination of a couple of them other people are pointing to the fact that the futures uh the futures january futures contracts are coming to an end in the near future here so that's something other people are pointing to. But looking at it right now, it really is just a, at least in my opinion, a correction. It is a pretty significant dip. But when I'm looking at this, I am not truly panicking. And the reason that I'm not truly panicking is because if we pop over to uh, Coin Market Cap, we look at the overall total market cap. Yes, we've fallen off a cliff in the past. Uh, yes, we've fallen off a cliff in the past, I don't know. 24 hours, 48 hours or so. But you zoom out the past three months, back in October, crypto wasn't even at a $200 billion valuation. Right now, we're still at above $550 billion in total market cap. Granted, if you got into crypto three days ago or three weeks ago, you don't care what it was like in October. But you have to understand that we're coming off the back of basically 3, 4x growth for the entire marketplace. So to automatically assume that there would never be a pullback, that can be a little bit uh, that can be a little bit misleading, at least in my opinion. If you are interested in my overall strategy right now, I am buying a little bit more on this dip. I am increasing my positions in the crypto assets that I feel most strongly in right now. At 0x, ZRX, that's AirSwap AST, that is Cardano, that's Bitcoin, and that's Nebulous. Those five, I'm looking at increasing my positions a little bit in. I am not going full all-in YOLO on it because if this dip continues, then if we dip below, I've already, I've already at this point in time, I do think we're below support. I do, I was looking at the 12.5 number. And hopefully seeing Bitcoin close above 13K, I do believe we are below Bitcoin support. And unless we have a nice rally upwards, I don't think that looks great. But because there is an opportunity for Bitcoin to, and for the entire crypto markets to, to, to I think, bounce pretty hard, there is that slight chance, there is a decent chance, I would weight it more that we are still kind of headed downwards. So... But just because there is that chance that we could bounce pretty significantly, I, I have increased my positions slightly in those five cryptos, 0x, AirSwap, Bitcoin, Cardano, and Nebulous. But I'm also saving money in reserve in case we see a sub 10K dip, 
with Bitcoin because the altcoins are going to go down with it. And that's going to just generate market. That's just going to induce market panic. And you're going to see the news headlines are going to be great. Number one, you are going to see the most ridiculous news headlines. The I told you so's, the bubbles, the ha ha ha's, whatever. At this point in time for me, I'm looking at this as, you know, hey, I'm going to buy in a little bit here. If it dips more, I got some more money in the background. Overall, I'm confident in this technology. Overall, I'm confident in this asset class. And I'm excited about the potential of what these cryptocurrencies, specifically the ones I mentioned, as well as the other ones in my portfolio. But I don't have enough money to increase everything in the portfolio. So that's kind of the approach I am taking right now. And you could you could really do the same thing. I mean, that's kind of my, my view with this right now is when we look at the all-time highs for a lot of these cryptocurrencies, do you really think that we hit a, a, a market top forever? Do you believe that? If you believe that, then fine. Do what you want to do. Sell. I don't care. Sell. Hold on to it. Do whatever. But when you look at where we were from an all-time high perspective, you're buying things at a massive discount to where they were three weeks ago, a month ago, a week ago, whatever it might be. You're talking about 41% discount for Bitcoin from the all-time high, 25% discount from Ethereum. Ripple, if you're an XRP, the standard fanboy, you're down 65%, 56% for Bitcoin Cash, 54% for Cardano. Those are big time movements down. I mean, you're buying at a 50% discount from the all-time high. So if you think at any point in time, at any point in time that those cryptos are going to establish a new all-time high, you're basically buying with the expectation of a potential 100 plus percent profit. That's my thought process right now is if you see something like Cardano, which is down 54%, if that ever hits its all-time high again, that move to get back to the all-time high is a 100% plus move. That's pretty big. That's pretty legit profit. And that can be said for any number of these crypto assets because the majority of them are down pretty significantly from their all-time high. Now, one thing I will say, and I got a little bit of a flack on, on Twitter. Some people didn't like it, but it is what it is. But there was somebody on Twitter that we were talking a little bit about Tron. And again, not to pick on Tron or anything like that, but Tron's down pretty hard from the all-time high. It's down at about, I think, 80%, 82% from its all-time high right now after that big-time pump. Uh, and there was somebody out there that was very positive about Tron. I think just brand new to the crypto space had Tron in their, their Twitter headline, said they were a Tron holder in their Twitter profile. And I posted about Tron taking a 70%, 70% being about down 70% from the all-time high previously. Now it's down 82% from its all-time high. But I talked about that and that person said, you know, hey, screw this. I'm selling. Um, I'm Crypto's all scam and I hate this. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy or girl where, you know, either you buy the top or... You buy into a massive pump and then you just get your face ripped off by said pump and you're down 70%, 75% and you're poo-pooing the entire crypto world or you're poo-pooing the entire crypto asset. You have to look historically at where crypto has come from. And like I said before, we were up three, four, five X in the past couple of months, the entire marketplace. So a pullback is in a lot of cases reasonable and expected. Granted, if you're brand new, it doesn't make it hurt any less, and I get that, but you have to put these losses in context, and if you are new, then that is always why, and I get crap for it too, but I always say dollar cost average your way in if you're brand new, and in the past couple months, that hasn't made a lot of sense when Bitcoin went from $3,000 to $5,000 to $10,000 to $15,000 to $20,000, but guess what? Dollar cost averaging made a lot of sense. If you had $10,000 to put into Bitcoin, or let's say if you had 20 grand to put into Bitcoin and you bought that when Bitcoin was at $15,000, you went all in and all of a sudden your Bitcoin is down 40%. However, you could have put $10,000 in when Bitcoin was at 15 grand and you could have kept the other 10 grand for yourself. And then, oh wow, Bitcoin's down 40%. It's down to Twelve thousand dollars is down to eleven thousand dollars. I'm going to buy this dip now, and I'm going to take the other ten grand, and I'm going to put that in. Now your 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 dollar cost average is a lot lower. Your cost basis is is a lot lower, and you're better off. So, while dollar cost averaging doesn't really make sense when, or it doesn't seem to make sense when things are on the up and up and always killing it and always killing it in crypto, 
Now, things can turn around pretty quickly. And, and with these 1,000, 2,000, 3,000% gains that some people are getting in these cryptocurrencies, you can also have 50, 60, 70% losses. And that is why a lot of cases people will say, you know, don't, don't put in more than you can afford to lose. It's, it's pretty legitimate because if you put your money into some of these cryptos that are down 80% from the all-time high, you had 10 grand. Now that 10 grand is $2,000. Is that cool with you or is that really not cool? Are you that confident in the technology? Are you that confident in the team, in the project that you're absolutely fine holding on to that? Because that's, that's a big, big, big time move down. So you want to consider that in the long run. The last thing here that I want to leave off with is just sticking with it. Even if you are uncomfortable out of your mind with the the losses that you might be facing or the volatility, even if the volatility is too much, even if you want to take profit or if you want to pull money out, you do what you, in every step of the way, you should do what you feel comfortable doing. Sometimes it's good to get out of your comfort zone, but I think that you should do what you feel comfortable doing. Don't let anybody tell you not to take profit. Don't have any, don't let anybody say you have weak hands, whatever. You need to do what you feel comfortable doing. However, what I will say to that is even if this is the start of a longer term bear trend, even if this is the start of something that is not, does not, it's not great. Um, stay with the industry and continue to learn because what happened in 2013, what happened in 2014 was this cycle on a much smaller scale. December 2013 came with Bitcoin going from $200 or 100 bucks all the way up to $1,200. All these altcoins started popping out, Dogecoin, some of the other ones, Litecoin, they started doing really well. And it brought a ton of new people into the space. The price went up, skyrocketed. And as soon as the price started going down and down and down, a lot of people left the space. A lot of people got, got disinterested. And the people that stuck it out the longest in 2014 and 2015 and 2016, when Bitcoin was no longer cool, when cryptocurrency was no longer cool, those people are basically all very well off now because they stuck with it and they were passionate about it and they continued to learn and they continued to make intelligent moves. And I'm not saying the same thing is going to happen again. But what I am saying is even if you get uncomfortable in the space and even if you pull your money out, I would still recommend trying to learn as much as possible and trying to stay with it because I feel like there's, at least in my mind, there are a lot of new people that are getting into the space right now that are get there or that have gotten into crypto. Maybe they bought the top, maybe they bought close to the top and they thought this thing was going to a billion bajillion dollars and this was going to be a $5 trillion market cap the week after they bought in and now they're not seeing profits. They're seeing losses and they're cutting their losses and they're running for the exit. Don't be that person. Try to learn from it. You're not going to make a perfect call every single time. So try to learn from it. Even if you get uncomfortable with the situation, I think that's really, really important. And if you are, if you've been around for a while, I think you're going to see this pattern kind of repeat itself. If the crypto market goes down, there's going to be a lot of these new entrants that were super excited, not about the tech, not about really anything involving the crypto markets or the economics behind it, but just, Hey, all my friends are telling me I can make a ton of money. And all these YouTube videos are telling me, yo, buy this hot coin, this cheap coin. This is the best coin ever. Don't be that person. Um, just stay with it and continue to learn. Cause I really am truly confident that this is something that will last quite some time and I'm excited about it. So that's just kind of my overall thought process there. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully it calmed a little bit of your nerves. If you are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button.